Hello, my name is Linda and I'm the brand ambassador for Needle Creations. Today I wanted to show you some of the stitches that you need to know in order to complete our awesome crochet kits, such as Starry the Unicorn here. So on the back of all of our kits, we show you a list of what is included in them. And you can see that Starry here includes 100% polyester yarn, 100% polyester fiber fill, a size E 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, a plastic needle, easy to follow instructions. I absolutely love our kits because it comes with almost everything that you need in order to complete them. The only other things that we do recommend that you have is a pair of scissors, and you may also wanna have a stitch marker. I personally like to have a stitch marker when I'm crocheting in the round, so if you're the same way, you may wanna grab a stitch marker as well. We do recommend that you do use our crochet hook when you are completing our kits because we have made sure that there's enough yarn to complete the project using our hook. Now I know as crocheters, we all kind of have a favorite brand, but these are really good plastic hooks. They're super sturdy and they work really well with the polyester yarn. They are comfortable and very easy to use. Also, if you look at the front of our box, we do recommend that you have a skill level of an intermediate. If you are a beginner, we definitely recommend that you practice the stitches in the video and become comfortable with the anatomy of a stitch and understand how they fit together before you tackle one of our kits. Otherwise, you might find yourself going frustrated as you try to work through the kit. So if you're ready, I'm gonna grab one of our instruction sheets and we can go ahead and get started. You can see on here, we have lots of useful information that you're also gonna find on your instructions kit, no matter which kit you are completing. You're gonna find a list of abbreviations up here at the top. Definitely read through those so you understand what the different abbreviations for the stitches are. And then below that, you're gonna see descriptions and images to help you work through some of the basic stitches. Today, we're gonna to go through these stitches that we see on this instruction sheet in order to do this, we need to start with a slip knot. So taking our 100% polyester yarn, I'm going to create a slip knot. I do this by wrapping the yarn around my thumb and forefinger of my non-dominant hand, and then I make sure that the short end of the yarn is on top. I grab the working yarn and pull it through the loop that I've created with my fingers. I can then tighten this down, and I've created my slip knot that is easily movable. I'm then going to insert my crochet hook so that the short string is to the back and my working yarn is to the front and I'm going to tighten it down. I want the actual knot to sit on the bottom of my hook and you can see my two strands of yarn there as well. When I go to start crocheting I'm going to be making sure I work with the working yarn not with the little tail. According to our directions here, in order to make a chain stitch, we need to make a slip knot on hook, yarn over, and pull the yarn through the loop on the hook to form a new loop. Be careful not to tighten loop. Repeat this step to form the number of chains specified. Above our chain stitch directions, we also see yarn over directions where it says to wrap the yarn from back to front over the hook, draw the yarn through to form a new loop. So the very first thing I wanna do is yarn over. I'm gonna bring my yarn from the back up and over my crochet hook. Now I wanna be careful that I don't go under my crochet hook because that really messes with your tension. You wanna go from the back up and over your crochet hook. And I'm gonna catch the yarn with my hook. I'm then gonna pull that caught yarn through the loop that's on my hook. Now I want the yarn that's on my hook to be snug but I don't want it to be so tight that I can't move my crochet hook. Again, I'm gonna yarn over, catch the yarn, and pull it through the loop on my hook. You can see that caught yarn is gonna form a new loop on my hook every single time I create a chain. So yarn over, catch the yarn, pull it through the loop on my hook. Yarn over, catch the yarn, pull it through the loop of my hook. You're gonna repeat this for however many chains your directions say to complete. Now, to make sure you've created the correct number of chains, you may need to count them. You never count the very first loop on your hook. You always start with the stitch below. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chains on my hook. Also, when you're looking at your chains, you should see a V pattern. If you look and you see kind of like a loop in the middle, 
you're actually looking at the back of your chain. We call that the back loop. So you wanna make sure when you're looking at your chain that you see a series of Vs. That means you're looking at the correct side and you're ready to work the next row of stitches. Now, the next stitch we're gonna go over is the single crochet. According to our instruction sheet, for a single crochet, you are going to insert hook into the work, second chain from the hook on starting chain as shown. Yarn over hook and pull a loop through, so two loops on hook. Yarn over hook again and draw through both loops on the hook, single crochet made. When we complete this, we never want to work into the very first chain on our hook. We want to work into the second chain. Sometimes your instructions may have you create a chain in order to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our hook and you're going to insert it into the top loop of your chain. And you can find that top loop by if you just hold your work out to the side, it's the loop that's here on the top. So I'm going to insert my hook just into the top loop. I'm going to bring my yarn up and over the hook and catch it. Yarn, so that's a yarn over. I'm then going to pull my caught yarn through the loop on my hook so that there are two loops on my hook. I am at this point halfway done with one single crochet. I'm then going to yarn over again and pull through both loops on my hook. So insert into the chain, into the top loop of the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop so there's two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. Insert into the top chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. Insert into the top chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. Insert into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And you can see I have two more stitches to do. Insert. Yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. And one more. Insert your hook in the top loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through both loops. I've now completed my first row of single crochets. At this point, the pattern's probably gonna tell you to turn your work. In order to do this, you hold your crochet st hook still and you literally turn the stitches over. You then will probably chain one to bring the yarn up to the correct height. We are now gonna work into the row of single crochets that we just created. When we do this, rather than working into one strand of yarn, we're gonna work into the both strands of yarn that form the Vs on the top of our work. This is different from when we worked into the chain because when you work into the chain, most of the time you only are gonna work into one loop. But here, we're actually going to work into two loops that are on our hook. So I'm going to insert my hook so that I have two pieces of yarn on top of my hook, the two pieces of yarn that made the V. I'm going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through both loops on my hook. Again, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both loops on my hook. And I'm going to keep going this way until I reach the other side. Okay, now that we have talked about the basic anatomy of a single crochet, we're gonna talk about single crocheting in the round. In order to single crochet into the round, you have to make a loop. And how exactly you do this is really gonna vary depending on the pattern that you have. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain two, and then I'm gonna work single crochets back into my, my second chain from the hook. And so I'm going to do six single crochets. So I'm going to insert into the chain, yarn over, pull up so that there are two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two loops on my hook. Now, unlike when I was doing a flat panel, I'm actually going to work back into the same stitch. So insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. That is my second single crochet. And I'm going to do this four more times. So insert hook into that exact same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops on my hook. That's three, four, five, 
and six. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my sixth stitch because I know that that is the last stitch that I created. So I'm just going to take a, a stitch marker and I'm going to slip it in to my the, the last single crochet. When you first start working with a stitch marker, they can feel a little bit awkward, but we're just going to kind of move it out of the way and push it out of the way while we work around. When you work single crochets in the round, you are still looking for the V's of the stitch. So I can see here, here's my first stitch, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then I have my sixth marked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert into my first stitch and I am going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and then I'm going to yarn over and pull through two loops on my hook. Now most likely your pattern is going to have you put two single crochets into the first stitch for the first loop around. So I'm going to do that again. This is a way to increase the number of stitches that you are working. So I'm going to move around and insert two single crochets in each of the six single crochets I just created. Now I'm back in my stitch marker. All I'm going to do is take my stitch marker out for a minute. I'm going to create my two single crochets. And before I go on to the next round, I'm just going to put my stitch marker back over my last single crochet. This is the way I like to use my stitch markers. If you have something else you prefer or you don't want to use a stitch marker, that's really your choice. But I do find it an easy way to mark my rounds. This time around, I'm only going to do one single crochet in each stitch. Now, the biggest difference between single crocheting in the round and single crochet in a flat panel is with a flat panel, you flip your work. When you single crochet in the round, you never flip your work. You just keep working around in a circle. So I'm not going to flip my work over and work backwards. I'm just going to keep working around for as many stitches as the pattern calls for. The next stitch we're going to be completing is the double crochet. According to our instruction sheet, it says to yarn over and insert the hook into the suggested space, chain, or stitch. Yarn over and draw yarn through pulling up a loop. Yarn over and pull yarn through two loops on hook. Yarn over and pull yarn through next two loops on hook, double crochet made. In order to make the double crochet, you're going to need to start with a slip knot and some number of chains. I've chained 12 here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my first double crochet into the fourth chain from my hook. So I have here one, two, three, and four. Remember, you don't count this loop that's on your hook. And like the single crochet, you're only going to work into the top loop of the chain. However, before you do this, and this is different from the single crochet, you're going to take your yarn and go up and over your hook to yarn over. You're then going to insert the hook into the fourth chain from the hook or wherever it tells you to, to on your instructions. I'm going into the fourth chain. You're then going to yarn over catch the yarn, pull it back through the chain so that there are three loops on your hook. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through two of those loops so you have two loops on your hook. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through two, the remaining two loops on your hook, and you're left with only one loop on your hook. This Now you're ready to complete your next double crochet. So you yarn over, you're going to insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, so you have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then yarn over, pull through two loops. When you have only one loop left on your hook, you're ready for the next stitch. So yarn over, Insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. As you work these double crochets, you're going to see that they are taller than the single crochets. And this is because of the number of times that you are yarning over and pulling through. So this is going to create for you a taller stitch 
than when you had the single crochets. I'm gonna go ahead and work this all the way back to my very first chain, and then I'll show you how you complete the next row after you are finished with the first row of double crochets that are occurring into the chain. So again, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we are all the way back in the beginning of our chain. So here is our row of double crochets. Okay, so I have here a swatch that I have worked up that has now two rows of double crochets. When you complete the next row and you're working into the double crochets from the row below, you don't just go into one of the loops of the V. You're going to work into both, which means that you're inserting your hook so that there are two pieces of yarn on the top. So in order to complete this next row, you're going to need to turn your work. You'll need to chain either two or three, and that's gonna depend on your pattern. I'm gonna chain three, and then you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch so that there's two pieces of yarn on the top, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Then you're gonna yarn over, insert into the next stitch, making sure that there's two pieces of yarn on top, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you're gonna keep working this all the way back to the very beginning. In addition to making sure you chain at the start of the row to bring your work up to the appropriate height, when you go to insert your hook into the stitch below, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have two pieces of yarn on top of your hook and then you complete the double crochet stitch. So a couple more times, yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And I have one more stitch and then I am done with this row. So there you go, there's three rows of double crochets. The next stitch we're gonna take a look at is the increased single crochet. And it tells us that we should do two SC in each stitch. If I go back up to my abbreviations, I see SC stands for single crochet. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do here is I'm gonna complete two single crochet in each stitch. Now we already did this once when we worked in the round, but I'm gonna show you how this works if you're not working in the round. Okay, so I have created here just a little row of single crochets, and I'm gonna increase into some of these stitches when I start round two. So I'm gonna start by turning my work, and then I'm gonna chain one to bring my yarn up to height. I'll do one single crochet in the first stitch, and then I'm gonna increase in the second. So to increase, I'm gonna do one single crochet into that stitch, and rather than moving on to the next stitch, I'm gonna do that again. So insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And so I have now put two single crochets into the second stitch from the row below. I'm gonna do one single crochet in the third, and then I'll do two into the fourth. Every time you do two single crochets, you're gonna increase the number of stitches that you have in that row. So now I'm gonna turn my work and chain one to bring my yarn up to height. If you look, you can see that my work at this point has gotten a little wider because I now have six single crochets instead of the four that I started with. So I have here one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I can continue the same pattern and that's gonna make my work even wider. So one single crochet followed by two. So there's the first single crochet in the second stitch and now the second. I'll do one single crochet into the third and then two 
single crochets into the fourth. You're gonna wanna increase wherever your pattern tells you to increase. I'm just choosing to do every other one, but your pattern may have you increase into every stitch or every second or third stitch. It's just really gonna depend based on what your pattern says. So you can see that that row is getting much longer now because of all the increasing that I've been doing. So that is how you do the increase single crochet. Okay, now that we've looked at how to increase a single crochet, we need to know how to decrease. To do this, you're gonna draw up a loop and next stitch two times so that you have three loops on hook, yarn over and draw through all three loops on hook. So I have single crocheted just a little swatch here, just of five stitches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decrease on this twice. So I'm gonna flip my work over, chain one to bring my yarn up to height. And then I'm gonna insert my hook, pull up a loop. If I were gonna single crochet at this point, I would just yarn over and then pull through both loops, but I'm not. I'm gonna actually go into the next stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop so that there's three loops on my hook. I'm then gonna pull through all three of those loops and that will decrease my stitch. Again, I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, go into the insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull all, through all three loops on my hook. I'm just gonna do one little single crochet here at the end. Okay, turn my work over. So I started with five stitches, now I'm down to three. I'm gonna chain one, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. I'm gonna do one single crochet there on the end, turn my work, chain one to bring my yarn up to height, then I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and the next stitch, insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, so that there are three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And you can see how each time I have decreased the number of single crochets that I have for that row. So the next stitch we have is the half double crochet. The half double crochet looks a lot like the double crochet. According to our instructions, you're going to yarn over hook, insert hook into next stitch, yarn over hook and pull through three loops on hook, yarn over hook and pull through all loops on hook, half double crochet made. So in order to make the half double crochet, I'm starting here with a slip knot and a chain of 10. And I'm going to insert my first half double crochet into the third chain for my hook. Now you're going to follow whatever your directions say. That's just what I'm choosing to do. So I'm gonna start with a yarn over, just like I do with the double crochet. I'm gonna insert my hook into the top loop of the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop so that there's three loops on my hook. Now, this is where the half double is different from the double crochet because I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And you're done. So yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. And I'm gonna keep doing this and go all the way back to the beginning so I can show you what you do when you need to work on the second row. And one more time, yarn over, Insert into the chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Now, just like the double crochet, you're gonna need to bring the yarn up to height before you start the next round. So you're going to turn your work and your pattern will tell you exactly how many to chain. Usually it's one or two. I'm gonna chain two. So I'm gonna chain one, chain two, and that brings my yarn up to the height of a double, half double crochet. In order to complete the first half double crochet on the second row, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch. Now you're going into a half double crochet here, so you should have two pieces of yarn on the top of your hook. You're then gonna yarn over, 
pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. So yarn over, insert your yarn into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook. And I can keep doing this for as many times as the pattern tells me or until I get to the end of my work. The next stitch we're going to take a look at is a slip stitch. This says yarn over, draw yarn through chain and the loop on your hook in one motion, slip stitch made. To work slip stitch in row stitches, single crochet shown, insert hook under the top two loops of the next stitch, yarn over, draw yarn through stitch, and the loop on your hook in one motion, slip stitch made. So like the single crochet, there's a couple different ways that you can create a slip stitch. So one way that you can create a slip stitch is by making a loop. And you can use a slip stitch to make a loop out of a bunch of chains. So I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 chains on my hook. And if I wanted to, I can move, make this into a loop by using a slip stitch. To do that, I'm going to insert my hook into the last chain in my row. I'm going to yarn over and pull my hook through the first chain. Now, rather than yarning over and pulling through the two loops of my hook like I would for a single crochet, I'm going to catch this loop and just pull it through the loop that was on my hook. That makes a slip stitch and you create a loop that you can now work into. The other way that you can do a slip stitch is by working into a row of stitches from down below. So I have here just a little row of single crochets. What I'm going to do is flip my work. I'm going to insert my hook into the second chain from my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And then rather than yarning over and pulling through the two loops on my hook like I would for a single crochet, I'm just going to catch that loop closest to my hook with my hook and pull it through the other loop on my hook. So insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through the loop on my hook. Insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through the other loop on my hook. And that's going to create a slip stitch. Whether you slip stitch on the stitches below or you slip stitch in the round will depend on what the pattern tells you. For the front post double crochet, it says yarn over, insert the hook from front to back to front around the post of the stitch. Yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops two times. Okay, so to complete the front post double crochet, you're gonna need to start with a row of double crochets. So the pattern will have you create some double crochets and then from there you'll work the front post. To start a row of front post double crochets, I'm gonna turn my work and chain three. Now, when you work front post double crochets, I would never work around this first double crochet because I've chained three above it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna front post double crochet around the second double crochet on the row below. To do this, I yarn over, I insert my hook towards the back of the work and go around the post and come out the front so that you can see here, here's the post and my hook has gone to the back and around out the front. Normally you would work into the top of the stitch, but for front post double crochet, you work around the post of the double crochet stitch. I'm then gonna yarn over Pull my hook back through, so I pull up a loop, and there are three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna yarn over, I'll insert my hook towards the back, go around the post and come out of the front of the work. Yarn over, pull my hook back through so that I pull up a loop, and I have one, two, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through, two, yarn over, pull through, two. Yarn over, go around from the back to the front, go around the post, yarn over, pull up a loop, 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go around the post from front, from back to front, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. As you work, your row of new stitches will sit in front of the work from the row below. And you'll continue doing this, working around the post for as many times as it tells you for your pattern. When you get to the end of your row, if you needed to create more front post double crochets, you would probably turn your work, chain three, And then again, you're not gonna work around the very first stitch because your chain three is there. You'll start working around the second stitch. You can see from this row of front post double crochets that I've created a little bit of texture into my work because of the way that the stitch is sitting. So the last stitch that we are going to complete is the front post double crochet decrease. So you are gonna do this stitch when you need to make two front post double crochets into one. And the way that we do this is we kind of do two half front post double crochet stitches and complete them together. According to our directions, you're going to yarn over, insert the hook from front to back to front around the post of the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop two times, yarn over, pull through all loops. So I have here my row of uh, double crochets. I'm gonna turn my work and then I'm gonna yarn over and chain three so that I can work this front post double crochet decrease. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook around the first post from back and then out the front, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now, if I wanted to complete a front post double crochet, I would yarn over again and pull through these two loops, but I don't wanna do that because I want to pull up another front post double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over, go around the next post, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops so that there are three loops left on my hook, and then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And that is gonna create for me a front post double crochet decrease. So yarn over, go around the next post, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go around the next post, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all three. Hopefully you found this video useful in assisting you with completing the stitches. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.